No, I think we're in a time that everything hidden is being revealed. I mean, that's something that we began uh, even before the election that God put that in my heart to do. And so we, we, we see people that profess to be Christians. But if you don't care about not sinning, if you don't care about walking in righteousness, if you don't have a passion for God, there is a good chance you're not saved. You made, you made some type of emotional commitment at the altar, but nobody prayed you through to the kingdom. There's something happens when you get saved, that you, you are translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The Holy Spirit moves on the inside of you, and, and Steve, with the fire of God is put on the inside of us, because we cannot serve God without fire, no more than the, the priest in the Old Testament can serve in the tabernacle without fire. It is in the outer courts, it is in the inner court, it is in the Holy of Holies. God must be served with fire given by the Holy Spirit. And uh, if there's Amen, anything, that, if there's anything, if there's there, no sin is worth the fire. There's not one thing this world can offer you that is worth the fire of God. Give it up, throw it on the altar, give it up for God, and God will consume that sacrifice with his fire, and he'll begin lighting up every single area of your life. The reason that you don't have the fire, my friend, many of you are saying, well, where is that fire? And you have been playing Christianity, you have been standing on the fence. God is waiting for you to take those carnal things and put them on the brazen altar so that he can light it on fire. And it's from that fire that you'll catch fire for the kingdom. There's no clearer way to say that. And by the way, we're commanded in Romans, aren't we, to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, purely and acceptable? I'll tell you what. I, 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 in, in my early Christian years when I was probably, uh, there's a couple prayers I shouldn't have prayed, but I did, and God's honoring them. One was basically the place of no reputation. The other was a price to preach. And I'm only saying this, that, uh, you know, I think it was uh, Bob Mumford who made a great statement. He said the problem with, with presenting yourself as a living sacrifice in modern Christendom is the sacrifice keeps crawling off the altar. I thought, what, what? an amazing statement. And, and that's and, why and the that's altar a, had four horns. you got to tie got that it. bad boy down. <laughs> And, and boy, you know, sometimes I think I need a double set of ropes in my own life. But this is this is a, a, a principle. Was it not a principle even when Abraham met, which I believe was obviously Jesus and the angels before Sodom and Gomorrah, I believe that was a Christophany. But every time you see men presenting an offering, doesn't fire con come down and consume uh, the offering on the altar? The types in the Old I listen, I love the Old Testament. If I could... You know, I think I wish I wish my parents would have been godly. My mother came to the Lord before she died. But I, I really, uh, you know, I wish they would have named me Genesis. I love Genesis, you know. I probably am not pronouncing it right in Hebrew. I know that. But the point is, is that Genesis, the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, it starts with fire. It ends with fire. How is the earth going to be done away with? By fire, and God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. That's not pie in the sky. That's the nature of God. And didn't the uh, mountain, when the children of Israel came to the base of the mountain, didn't it quake with earthquakes and it was on fire? How about the burning bush? I believe the burning bush signified the end to the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and the presentation of God's presence being the fulfillment of everything that man was deceived with and by Moses experiencing that uh, fire of almighty God the point is is that his face shone like a thousand suns and the glory of God is so amazing Henry Gruber tells a story you probably heard this Dr. Heiser Dr. forgive me Dr. Lake that that we he told the story of being in a fellowship, and people were praying and genuinely into worship. And the Lord literally told uh, Henry to stop the worship. He said, because the people that were praising him and worshiping had so much sin in the life, if the glory of God, they would send down the glory, if the glory of God fell on them as they were singing, it would kill half of them. Did you ever hear that, Dr. Lake? No, but I, I think that's the reason that we're not seeing the glory of God now. 
is the people won't get right with God. So here's the thing. Okay, this is a question, then we'll get back on track. I believe when, and some people hate it when I take a rabbit trail, but I can tell you this, before the night is out, people will say, I don't know why, but when you guys went that way, the Lord spoke to me. That's because I don't know who's out there listening, but God does. And if you say one thing, Dr. Lake, I say something, Doug says something, or Joe says something, if we, when we hit a nerve, that means that the Lord has directed the entire focus of the show to that one single person. That's the black sheep factor. Thank God that he cares for black sheep. I are one. And I understand that's bad English, okay? Or I were one. But the point is, and I understand, I should say I was one. But sometimes if you use the correct English, people no longer speak English. I think they speak uh, a Martian or something because they do not understand the clarity of the word of God. And you've got apostate preachers saying, well, God didn't really mean this. God didn't really say that. I said, listen, I know the Lord, and he's more than capable of getting his thoughts across. Has he who, is he who created the tongue not able to communicate, or he who created the ear not able to speak into it, or he who created the eye not able to present truth to it? I'm telling you, people of God, I, I, may, may the fire of God fall upon all of us tonight on this show, and may you experience the warmth of the pres- presence of the living God tonight like you've never, ever, ever experienced. May the coldest heart melt. May the most on fire person listening or persons listening get with it. It is not in the enticing words of man's wisdom. It is in the demonstration and the power and the spirit thereof. Because we've lost the art of holiness, because we have, we no longer call sin, sin. We no longer call righteousness, righteousness. We, We try to twist the word to appease our flesh. Instead of using the word as a as a uh, microscope or magnifying glass to see what needs to be removed out of our life and placed on the brazen altar, that we there's several things. Number one, what's being manifested in churches is not the Holy Spirit in many churches, because if it was, he'd be calling them to repentance. We don't have the glory of God manifesting. For like Steve said, half of the people would drop dead right now, and I I can tell you why uh, the rapture is not going to happen here in September. It's because if it did, 5% of the body of Christ would go and everybody else would get left behind. Because we we, we have been given cotton candy and said it was the meat of the word. And it's not. The meat of the word has to start with 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 a bloody rugged cross and me surrendering to the God who loved me so much that he gave his life for me. And that when I say that Jesus is Lord, not only am I confessing that he is Almighty God come in the flesh, but he is reverenced, he is holy that he's in charge, and I'm not. And the modern church doesn't want to hear that, guys. Well, you know, the, the greatest thing that we have in spiritual warfare, you know, any time that you're in, in I'm ex-military, you're in combat, you're in this combat situation, one or two things come, come to mind, either fight or flight. But for the believer, there's a third option. It's surrender to the greater force. And the greater force is Jesus. Once I surrender to him, I'm not fighting him, I'm not fleeing from him, I have surrendered and I have fallen at his feet. That is the place that I can stand up in him and I can fight the good fight of faith. From that moment on, we do not move in fear, we move in faith because we know the one to whom we have surrendered to. He's become our king, he's become our lord, he's become our kinsman redeemer that we find out just how much he loves us, and we begin to find out how painful sin is and how important righteousness is. You know, one of the reasons, not only is the glory not manifesting, but nobody will appear before the court of God because there's so much sin in their life, they're afraid to ask for judgment because they're afraid they're going to go. And we, 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 I mean, we, guys, we have got to get this thing right. We, we have got to understand that the spirit realm operates on laws. And in fact, there are two laws in, in Revelation chapter seven. The apostle Paul was talking about. Listen, you know, I've learned the law with my mind. I want to do the law of God, but there's something stopping me. I found that there was another law in my flesh. He called it the law of sin and death. And people have wrongly said that that was another aspect of God's Torah. No, it's not. Satan set up his kingdom to be a mirror image, negative version of the kingdom of God, and it has its own law. 
that is thriving in the hearts of sinful men. And that law wants them to sin and sin deeply and to sin powerfully so that it can create more of the iniquity force to blacken the hearts of men and to power the kingdom of darkness. And the cross kills that in us, that once we're crucified with Christ, I am dead to that sin. And because of Christ, I am now free to, to function in the law of liberty in Christ Jesus. And when I enter into that court, that thing is a court of law. And guys, what we need to do, we, we need to understand that whenever we allow sin in our lives, that there is an agent of the kingdom of darkness accusing us before the throne of God and saying, we have a right to do more. We have a right to do more. We can bring curses. We can bring sickness. We can, we can bring calamity to their life because they have opened the door to us and they won't repent. That's why, guys, we've got to be quick to repent. But not only do we need to be quick to repent, it's, it's through that blood that we are cleansed that now we can stand in that court. And, guys, this is the pivotal point because we even see it in, in the book of Revelation where there are those before the throne of God saying, how long are you going to put up with this? How long is this going to happen? And the next thing you know, in the next chapter, Lucifer is thrown out of the second heaven. When we show up, guys, we can actually turn the tables because the most guilty party in that court is the prosecuting attorney. 